Okay, so uh, for this video, we're going to do a little different format. We're on our way to an undisclosed location. Well, maybe not entirely undisclosed, but we're out here in the hill country of Texas, and we do a whole lot of stuff about repairing lanterns and everything else, but you may wonder, well, where the heck do you get all these lanterns from? Well, this is kind of how that works. So we go around to a bunch of different uh, antique shows and stuff like that. The weather's starting to cool off here a little bit. So we figured we'd give this one a shot. So we're somewhere between uh, Blanco and Fredericksburg at the moment, going down a really nice country road and on our way to the Fredericksburg trade days. So uh, we'll walk through there and probably get a few shots of things that are going on and uh, different places that uh, you can look for in, in terms of uh, different lanterns and stuff like that. Maybe we'll find something, maybe we won't. Who knows? All right, so we are here. And uh, I didn't bring any external mics in here, so hopefully the audio is going to be not too bad. But this is just kind of what you see coming into one of these places. We've got a bunch of different barns to go through bunch of different directions probably gonna go to this one first because that's number one and we'll see what we see all right had a bit of change of plans dear wife tells me that hey you know why don't, why don't we do the outside stuff while it's a little bit cooler I was like oh fair enough so that's what we're gonna do and uh, we're gonna check it out see what we can see doesn't look too promising so far but uh, we'll see what we end up with. So, first finds of the day. All pretty common. One on the left there is a little older. But uh, yeah, so you'll eventually find stores like this where you find actually real antique stuff as opposed to finding just a bunch of junk. But this is actually a pretty good store. So we go from this guy here, which has got a bunch of really cool barn finds and other stuff like that. And we spin around to this, which is nothing but a bunch of manufactured, supposed to look old, but really isn't kind of junk. Although there is a old fridge there in the corner, so that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, you'll find a lot of this stuff here is all kind of made up stuff that looks old, but has all been produced in Mexico or China. A little bit disappointing. All this stuff here is all mass produced. None of this is, none of this is antique. So this one shows some pretty good promise here. As we kind of wander through here a little bit, see that there are a couple of 220s here. Pretty decent age. Probably clean up all right, but again, common lanterns and not really something I'm interested in. I've got plenty of green lanterns. Some other kind of random stuff that you'll run across. So here's a old fuel tank and then lo and behold, a burgundy tank sitting out by itself. So that's pretty cool. Probably not anything I need, but uh, still pretty interesting. Got some radiant elements up here for unknown heater. All good. Kind of reaching the end of the property here, so we're, uh, some of these here are pretty interesting. We'll be going back and forth up and down these little aisles, but there's uh, tons of stuff to look at. They got a pretty good, uh, pretty good selection of good stuff to new stuff or new stuff that looks old. But uh, yeah, plenty to look at. This one back here in the corner had some interesting stuff, and it's got quite a path to get through it. So, this is kind of rare. Six of these, and they all kind of look like this. 
and you never know what you're going to find in these. I mean, a bunch of interesting stuff. Here's a old blacksmith's blower, helicopter up top, repurposed guitars, kind of steampunked. This one's not too bad. Price, a little bit, something else. And that is a brand new tune, mind you. Appreciate you all for coming out here. How are you today? All right. So this is pretty much it. Walking out. Got some treasures, but uh, all in all, not too bad. Beautiful day, hot and sunny, hotter than I wanted, but <laughs> it's better than rain, I suppose. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful in all, all directions, right? Just gotta love that Texas sky. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in to this one. I don't know how many more we'll do like this, but every now and then we'll probably mix it up a little bit just to have something a little bit different. But uh, yeah, so that's it. This is how the the picking thing works. You know, some folks can go out and find different barns and stuff like that, and they're able to pick stuff out of that. But you know, I found the folks here, they do a lot of work for you. Maybe you pay 10 bucks more than you want to. Maybe a little bit more than that. It just kind of depends. But you get some really quality stuff. There's a lot of stuff we saw here that was all right. But, you know, green lanterns and stuff like that, I don't need them. I got lots of them. So I try to focus on more of the nickel type stuff and everything else. And we saw a few of those in this video. They were a little bit pricey. But, you know, someone else would pick them up. They're not that precious to me to get them. But uh, we'll just kind of see how it goes. So until next time, keep them lit. Hey, so you're probably wondering, he had that amazing iron and he just kind of filmed it and walked away from it. Well, it didn't walk away from it. So the, uh, the deal is, is that we did actually pick up the iron. The iron is pretty amazing, so it sits in its own original box. This is probably the original price, judging by the, the way that the, uh, the handwriting is on here with the commas instead of like periods and stuff like that. It looks like it was probably originally sold for $8.30. I got it. Well, let's just say we got it for less than that. But it does come with the, uh, the little fuel box, a measuring can, so you fill this up until you don't want to overflow it, but this is what you use to fill the, the iron itself. The iron itself is absolutely beautiful. There's a couple of little... So uh, a little bit of interruption, we had some tree frogs trying to jump in here, so that's all right. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we've got, and, and don't mind the ink stains, I bought some uh, some ink for a fountain pen, but nonetheless, the, the lantern is in almost pristine shape. There's a little bit of a burn mark here. The bottom looks really good. There's a tiny bit of, uh, of uh, corrosion there. It looks like someone just didn't know how to light this, so there's, there's some discoloration here, but that should actually come off pretty easy. So uh, the liner looks to be really great shape. Um, it comes with a trivet, which you don't always see. Uh, so it would actually sit just like that on the trivet. And then um, you have <laughs> the actual real instruction manual on this. So uh, dated 9 of 45. So uh, all this is this probably was tied down to the, on the, no, this is way too white to be old. But nonetheless, this, what kind of fuel to use, how to actually fire it and everything else. The whole parts list, uh, nothing here. Well, one, one, one thing, the, the fount is $1.50. Uh, everything else is pretty much under a dollar. It's pretty amazing. So anyway, a very cool find, beautiful shape in the original box. So uh, great stuff. That's your little uh, bonus cut for today. But wait, there's more. Well, we're just gonna go ahead and cut this one in because uh, made a little detour. 
And here's an older one here. Again, pretty common, 220. Nothing really all that special, but they are out there. And here we have a March 1956, which is in pretty good shape. But uh, again, not particularly exciting, and they want 75 bucks for it. So we come walking around here, and what do we see? But hiding back here is a uh, coal and iron. I want 50 bucks for it, and it's actually in really nice shape, but it doesn't have a fuel can or the pump or the box or whatever, but still, not a bad deal in, in actually really nice shape. Yeah, come around here and find a Sears Coleman Lantern. A little bit pricey at 124 bucks though for the shape it's in. So, just in case you're wondering, yet another bonus shot. I don't put these lanterns together and just put them on the shelf. They get used. So this is a uh, 321B that I got here that I built from uh, a bunch of parts. Needed a globe, needed a collar, found all that. Got it up and running again. And it runs great. It's uh, very bright, easy to start. And it works really nice. I've got it on one of these uh, uh, tripods here. Works really, really well. But we're out here in uh, in Blanco and doing a little bit of grilling. It's kind of late, but uh, it's all right. So uh, show you a little bit of what we got going on on the grill. But uh, yeah, so this is the uh, country style pork ribs. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's the lantern there. She works pretty good. And uh, definitely is uh, one that I grab a lot, a very often on these camping trips just because it's so small and so powerful and it works really nice. All right, last bonus shot, I promise. <laughs>